July 1, 2025. Astronomers detect 3 to slash Atlas, a blazing traveler from another star system, rocketing into our solar system at 130,000 miles per hour. Its orbit proves it's not from here, and then the real shock drops. Instead of water, its jets erupt with eight times more carbon dioxide and almost no expected gases, flipping comet science upside down. Even the brightest labs can't replicate this chemistry, and its path refuses to follow gravity's script. With scientists and governments scrambling, 3 East slash Atlas is behaving so strangely that it's forcing us to question everything we know about the cosmos. Just how deep does this riddle go? At 3.12 a.m. Chilean time, the Atlas Survey's automated system flagged a fast-moving point of light in the southern sky. Within minutes, the object's speed, over 130,000 miles per hour, stood out as an anomaly. Dr. Lena Hernandez, leading the early shift, pulled up the data stream and checked the raw astrometry. The trajectory didn't match anything in the catalog. By sunrise, the team was already in a flurry of calls with the Minor Planet Center in Cambridge and colleagues across three continents. The orbit fit came back with an eccentricity of nearly 5.8, hyperbolic, meaning it's not coming back. Only two other objects on record had ever shown this kind of path, Oumuamua and Borisov, both confirmed interstellar. Now, a third. The Minor Planet Center issued a formal circular by noon, designating the object 3I slash Atlas. The announcement triggered a cascade of follow-up observations from telescopes in Hawaii, South Africa, and Australia. Dr. Hernandez remembers the moment the confirmation email landed we had a sense something historic just happened. The object's arc was too steep, its speed too high, for any solar system origin. It was slicing through the planetary plane at an angle that defied the usual comet crowd. Within hours, the International Network of Sky Surveys had logged hundreds of observations, each reinforcing the initial calculations. The hyperbolic trajectory held up under scrutiny. No amount of orbital tweaking could fit it to a bound path. The object was officially interstellar the third in history. The excitement was palpable. Some team members described tears, others a racing pulse. For Dr. Hernandez, it was the culmination of years spent combing the sky for the rarest visitors. The baseline was now set. Three, I slash Atlas, a bona fide messenger from another star, racing toward the inner solar system. The question on everyone's mind, what secrets would it bring with it? Precision tracking began the moment 3i slash Atlas was confirmed as interstellar. Over 4,000 astrometric measurements poured in from observatories on five continents, each one tightening the fit on its hyperbolic path. But even as the data mounted, something refused to settle. The expected drift, caused by jets of gas venting from the surface, should have matched the classic models. Instead, the residuals persisted. Each time the orbital solution was recalculated, small but stubborn discrepancies remained. The team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory ran the numbers again, this time folding in the massive carbon dioxide outflows detected by JWST. Still, the fit was off. The comet's position wandered by tens of milliseconds over weeks, enough to be statistically significant yet not enough to blame on random error or overlooked jets. Within JPL, the debate turned pointed. Some modelers argued for more exotic explanations, perhaps a previously unknown physical force or a subtle effect of the comet's unique chemistry. Others urged caution, pointing to the uncertainties in nucleus mass, the challenges of background subtraction, and the possibility of systematic bias in the global astrometry. Internal memos captured the tension. One warned against publishing unstable fits that might undermine confidence in the agency's predictive tools. Another pressed for transparency, noting that similar residuals in Oumuamua had sparked years of controversy. No official value for the unexplained acceleration has been released. Unlike Oumuamua, where the non-gravitational term was published to six significant digits, for 3i slash Atlas, 
The anomaly remains a matter of internal debate. The only certainty, even after accounting for all known forces, the comet does not behave as a standard outgassing body should. The numbers refuse to lie flat. For now, the drift remains, a silent challenge to the rulebook of comet dynamics and a puzzle that no one at JPL is ready to dismiss. The first round of data from the James Webb Space Telescope arrived as 3i slash Atlas crossed 6.44 astronomical units from the Sun, a realm where water ice should lie dormant, locked beneath the surface. Instead, the instruments registered torrents of gas, not water, but carbon dioxide. The numbers were impossible to ignore. Each second, over 120 kilograms of carbon dioxide streamed from the nucleus, while water vapor barely trickled out at 15 kilograms per second. The ratio, 8 to 1, stood in stark contrast to every known comet, where water is always king and carbon dioxide plays a distant second. Here, the roles were reversed. No solar system comet, not even the notorious C-2016 R2, had ever shown such an inverted profile. Astrophysicists scrambled to verify the result. The Very Large Telescope in Chile, SphereX in low Earth orbit, and the KEK Observatory in Japan all trained their spectrographs on the coma. Each set of spectra, from the infrared to the ultraviolet, told the same story. Carbon dioxide dominated, water was scarce, and carbon monoxide, usually a reliable partner to carbon dioxide, was almost entirely absent. The chemical fingerprint refused to match any known template. In the words of Dr. Thomas Puzia, we just cracked open the door to a whole new world of chemistry. Yet the surprises did not end with the volatiles. As the comet brightened, high-resolution spectra from the VLT revealed a series of sharp emission lines, pure atomic nickel, each signature clear and strong. But iron, its usual companion in cometary vapors, was nowhere to be found. Multiple checks confirmed the absence. Even as the nickel signal climbed to nearly 5 grams per second by late August, the iron lines stayed flat, buried beneath the noise. This nickel-only vapor, unaccompanied by iron, has never been observed in any solar system object or interstellar visitor. The anomaly persisted across every instrument and every observing run. Laboratories raced to keep pace. MIT Caltech and Max Planck teams chilled comet analogs to deep space temperatures, bombarded them with cosmic rays, and measured the gases that boiled off. Water always led, carbon dioxide lagged behind, and iron inevitably joined the nickel. No experiment could reproduce the composition seen in 3 pi slash Atlas. The data defied every physical and chemical model tested so far. The raw numbers left no room for denial carbon dioxide outgassing at levels never seen before, nickel vapor standing alone, unaccompanied by iron, a chemical fingerprint that breaks the rules set by billions of years of solar system history. For comet science, the crisis was not just about explaining one oddball object. It was about whether the chemistry of the cosmos is far stranger than anyone had imagined. In laboratories from Pasadena to Heidelberg, the hunt for an answer took on a feverish pace. Scientists chilled mixtures of carbon dioxide, water, and nickel to temperatures colder than Pluto's shadow, then bombarded them with cosmic ray analogs meant to mimic eons in deep space. Yet the results never budged. Water always boiled off first, leaving only a thin trace of carbon dioxide behind. The best any experiment could manage was a 2 to 1 ratio, nowhere near the 8 to 1 seen in 3Y slash Atlas. And every time nickel vapor appeared, iron came along for the ride. The pure nickel signature, so clear in the comet's coma, refused to materialize in any earthbound chamber. Dr. Helena Zhang, leading the cryogenic chemistry group at M1T, described the frustration in a late night group call. We tried every permutation, different grain sizes, cosmic ray doses, even exotic catalysts. Iron always sneaks in. It's like the rules are different out there. Her counterpart at Max Planck, Dr. Ulrich Faber, echoed the sentiment. We can't cheat the chemistry. The numbers just don't add up. With each failed trial, the speculation multiplied. 
Some argued that 3E slash Atlas must have formed in a planetary system where water ice was rare, perhaps near a faint red dwarf or on the fringes of a protoplanetary disk. Others pictured a catastrophic collision, an impact so violent it stripped away the outer layers, exposing a core rich in carbon dioxide and nickel, but depleted in water and iron. A third camp pointed to the long, lonely voyage between the stars. They imagined cosmic radiation over millions of years, transforming the surface chemistry in ways no laboratory could reproduce. Each theory found supporters, but none could explain every detail. Avi Loeb, already known for challenging orthodoxies, added fuel to the debate. In op-eds and conference panels, he floated the possibility of artificial engineering, a controlled release of carbon dioxide, perhaps as a byproduct of propulsion or some unknown mechanism. The idea drew quick rebuttals from comet specialists who insisted that extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. Yet the lack of a working natural model left the door open, if only a crack. Meanwhile, the data kept coming. Every new spectrum, every recalculated orbit, forced another round of late-night calls and lab reports. The crisis was no longer just about understanding one object. It was about the limits of chemistry itself and whether the cosmos still holds surprises that Earth's laboratories aren't equipped to solve. For now, the mystery stands, unsolved, unyielding, and impossible to ignore. News of three. I slash Atlas's discovery swept through science desks and social media feeds with a velocity to match the comet's own. Within a single week, headlines from Tokyo to Toronto speculated on its origins, its chemistry, and the meaning of an interstellar visitor venting unknown gases into the solar wind. Space agencies fielded a deluge of interview requests. The Minor Planet Center's public servers crashed twice in July under the weight of public queries, while online forums and amateur astronomy groups reported record new memberships. Every major science magazine ran cover stories, and the phrase, Atlas Weird Gas, trended above celebrity scandals in multiple countries. Policy circles responded in kind. By mid-August, White House science advisors convened an emergency session to review the latest findings. The agenda included not only the chemical anomalies, but also the persistent orbital drift with officials from NASA, the Space Force, and the National Science Foundation in attendance. The Situation Room briefing ran late into the night fueled by concerns over planetary defense and the reliability of current comet models. A senior advisor described the mood as, restless curiosity mixed with a sense of responsibility. This is not just a science story anymore. Petitions circulated online calling for expanded funding for both comet research and planetary defense. Congressional aides fielded calls from constituents worried about the unknowns. Could an object with such unusual chemistry pose a hazard? Was the unexplained drift a sign of something more? The House Science Committee scheduled a hearing on interstellar objects with testimony from leading astronomers and defense analysts. While no official budget figures were released, insiders reported a flurry of grant proposals and new research initiatives, especially focused on rapid response observation campaigns and laboratory simulation of exotic comet chemistry. International agencies echoed the urgency. The European Space Agency fast-tracked proposals for coordinated monitoring, while Japan's KEK Observatory extended its spectroscopic campaign into the fall. Private foundations, too, signaled a willingness to support new instrumentation. The sense of momentum was unmistakable. For the first time since the days of Shoemaker-Levy 9, comet science became a matter of public policy as well as academic debate. Every new data release from JWST or VLT was dissected not only by scientists, but by policymakers and the public, each searching for answers in a story that now belonged to the world. In scientific circles, the phrase time capsule has taken on new gravity. For 3i slash Atlas, it is more than a metaphor. It is a direct challenge to everything believed about cometary chemistry and planetary origins. The international community now treats each spectrum, each orbital refinement, as a message sealed billions of years ago in a distant disk, only now arriving at our doorstep. 
every new observation becomes a battleground for interpretation. On one side, planetary chemists argue for natural origins, perhaps a world where water ice is rare and carbon dioxide rules. On the other, theorists press for more radical answers, invoking catastrophic collisions, cosmic ray alchemy, or even the faint possibility of engineered exhaust. The journals fill with preprints and rebuttals. Arguments hinge on the latest data from Chile, Hawaii, and the James Webb Space Telescope. Peer review, usually a slow and methodical process, has accelerated under the pressure. Teams from MIT Caltech and Max Planck race to simulate the observed chemistry in cryogenic labs, yet each failed trial tightens the knot. We're missing something fundamental, admits Dr. Helena Jang, whose group has spent months bombarding comet analogs with cosmic rays, only to watch iron stubbornly appear alongside nickel every time. The frustration is palpable, but so is the sense of discovery. No model fits, says Dr. Ulrich Faber. That's why this is a true time capsule. It's a record of conditions we've never seen and maybe can't reproduce. The countdown now centers on October 30, 2025. That day, JWST has a dedicated window, possibly the last before 3i slash Atlas slips beyond reach. The world's largest telescopes will synchronize, aiming for one final high-resolution look at the coma's gases and dust. Instrument teams have spent months refining their pipelines, calibrating against solar analogs, and rehearsing background subtraction in crowded star fields. The stakes are clear. This observation could settle the debate over volatile ratios, nail down the nickel to iron puzzle, and perhaps catch a glimpse of isotopic signatures that would pinpoint the comet's birthplace. No one can predict what the data will reveal. Some hope for a breakthrough that will rewrite the chemistry of planet formation. Others brace for more questions. In the words of Dr. Martin Cordinier, we're standing at the edge of the unknown. This is why we build these observatories why we push the models until they break. 3i slash Atlas is a time capsule, but it's also a test of our tools, our theories, and our willingness to accept what the universe throws at us. The global research community waits, united by anticipation and a rare sense of humility. The next chapter depends on a few hours of clear skies and the unforgiving honesty of the data. Three, I slash Atlas stands out with a carbon dioxide to water ratio of nearly 30 to 1, confirmed by the James Webb Space Telescope, VLT, SphereX, and KEEK. No known comet matches this chemistry. Its orbit shows persistent deviations that current gravity and outgassing models cannot explain, echoing the unresolved mysteries of Oumuamua, yet this time with visible gas. Laboratories at M1T, Caltech, and Max Planck have failed to recreate 3 y slash Atlas's unique emissions, and no peer-reviewed theory fully accounts for its nickel-only vapor or chemical imbalance. As of October 2025, follow-up JWST observations are scheduled, and the debate continues in scientific journals. The origin, formation, and true nature of 3 y slash Atlas remain open questions. Each interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, Borisov, and now Atlas, has challenged the rules in a different way, forcing astronomers to reconsider what comets from other stars can be. For now, 3i slash Atlas remains a literal time capsule, carrying secrets from a planetary system beyond our own. <laughs>